My job is important uh, because without me, there would be more lives lost. What we really care about the most is the protection of personnel and property. We put our lives on the line so other people don't have to, uh, don't have to do it. Army, Navy, Marines, local nationals, anybody who needs us would go out there and we'd take everybody to these all day long. We're uh, covering about 50% of uh, Afghanistan is Air Force EOD. So uh, we're out there on the, you know, the front of the lines actually doing what the you know, Army, Navy, Marines, everybody else is doing. And it's really great getting to work with all the different services and uh, what we do when we're deployed. I've walked the streets, I've been shot at, I've been blown up, I've shot back, I've, you know, just it's crazy amazing stuff that, you know, you, that you, you only think of doing, you know, when you're a kid. The largest cache I found had 4,222 mortars in it. It was a two-day op to recover all those. Uh, the IED missions, the roadside bombs, uh, most of us have plenty of those now. I'm up to just over 100 myself, and that goes from remote controlled IEDs to command wired IEDs. You never know if you can have a secondary device or if you're going to have a tertiary device, a third device, multiple IEDs or small arms, anything like that. It's, they throw anything at you. You let your guard down for uh, you know, 30 seconds, next thing you know you could almost be shot or blown up. We rolled into town, uh, the PDK had already apprehended the suicide bomber. His brother had blown himself up about 15 minutes prior, right in the middle of the market, and killed uh, roughly 10 to 15 people. And after the crowd came together to start collecting casualties, the brother was supposed to come in and blow himself up. He was apprehended and they handcuffed him to a tree. And <laughs> called us, we came in, uh, sent a robot downrange. The gentleman who was the suicide bomber, uh, he was doped up when we first got there. About 20 minutes into it, he started sobering up, realizing that we were there to help him instead of kill him. And he actually started helping with us. Uh, we were able to successfully remove it off the suicide bomber and then question him and find out that him and his brother, uh, they were captured, drugged, um, up by the Syrian border, put in this car with explosives and given this mission. We were just finishing up working on IED. This kid came up to me with the, the battery to this battery pack to this IED that we were working on, and he said that he pulled it off of it. We verbally showed him not, you know, not to do it again, that you know, he could have, could have killed himself and what he did, but uh, his father came up to me after we were done, because his father was standing beside him, and you know, started really thanking us that, uh, you know, for, our, our, for being there, thanking the U.S. for being there to, uh, to support his country and try to get them back on their feet and everything. Wow. Like I'm, I'm doing this at 22, but I'm still considered one of the best in the world because of the training that we've had and the experiences that we had. It's really, it's a, it's a cool feeling. I didn't know how close of the brotherhood the UD community is, uh, whether you're Army, Navy, Marines, or Air Force. We all know each other, talk to each other for five minutes, see each other two years down the road, and it's like we're still best of friends.